Wonderful. Thank you so much, Peter. Um, do we have one or two questions that uh, want to be asked immediately? I hope you're going to also be with us at CBASE and tomorrow, so that we'll have plenty of time to quiz you about everything that you shared. So if I don't see a hand, okay, I, I knew, I knew you had to go. <laughs> thank you. Um, I like the, uh, the, thank you, Peter, for your presentation. I like the idea of uh, network local manufacturing. Um, we use that expression, network local manufacturing, in my previous organization, uh, because people understood it better than distributed manufacturing. Um, one of the things that um, I, I wonder about the way that mainstream industry uses distributed manufacturing versus how, say, the open movement uses distributed manufacturing. And you hear a lot of a lot about. I'm going to a major sort of manufacturing mainstream manufacturing conference next week in uh, the, the exhibition centre in London, in Birmingham, and you know hundreds and hundreds of people at this massive trade show. And there's an entire section on distributed manufacturing. But what it means is we, the Lego Lego company, because I like Lego, um, we can control the machines in the Czech Republic without ever leaving Denmark, you know? That's what distributed manufacturing means, I think, to them. Do, are you, do you have a view of how, do you have visibility of how mainstream manufacturing sees distributed manufacturing? How is that different to the way the open world sees it? I mean, the, uh, mainstream manufacturing is exactly your, your Lego thing. Yeah. And they, they dream of having the dark factory no people around. Oh, we've been dreaming about that since the 80s. So luckily, that's not going to happen, not, not even with the technology that we've got around uh, uh, these days. Um, so they're, they're not at all about uh, uh, taking into account uh, local circumstances. And I see a small but existent danger in the open source hardware community that they start to mimic this center out paradigm in setting standards, global standards, that everybody who needs to participate in open, or wants to participate in open, uh, open source hardware needs to follow. And I think we need to figure out how to formulate standards differently so they, that they can be adaptable to local circumstances but still support what I call federat federat uh, federate learning, federative learning, so that we know which kind of experience is valuable to share in the network and which kind of experience is best kept local. Hello. Hi. Uh, my question may be somehow old, but I would like to ask you from your experience. For the open hardware and open source things, we are in this field. But I would like to ask from your experience, how to keep this type of innovation and this type of activity sustainable? Because gig can provide a lot of support for goodness, for how to understand ourselves as humans, and how to support ourselves, and how to develop, and even how to solve issues like the pandemic and everything. But all the time, there is a materialized part, how to make it sustainable, especially in countries that not have that much uh, support for innovation, because they may not similar to the, some countries with capitalism, where companies can need to be uh, to maintain their uh, market share through innovation, adding feature for their products. If the countries or other part of world don't have this type of competition, which be the fuel for innovation, what can we do? Thank you. Right. Um, I think we need to be clear on one thing. Um, this this idea of innovation that uh, moves, the economy f moves the economy on in capitalist um, manufacturing uh, 
That's a myth they make us believe. They do innovate, but they only market the first single step. And you know, the, the best known example is Apple with its iPhone. Um, I think to, to answer your question, which is like similar to, the, to one of the questions we had this morning in, uh, uh, around repair, I think we need to start, different, to start think differently uh, about the economy and add another model of thinking to the capitalist thinking and the market thinking of the economy. And this is a very ancient uh, uh, principle, the principle of the commons. And the principle of the commons is long-term stewardship for shared resources, collective stewardship for shared resources. And that's the opposite model to the BMWs and the iPhones. And that's not only the material we build stuff from, that's equally and probably more importantly relevant for food, for well-being, for education. And that's a big shift to move from the pure market economy thinking with as little regulation as possible to an economy that is built on principles of the commons, where also this local entanglement can be built into the local rules that people follow. Yeah. Uh no, I, I think that you just uh, answered that, but it was related with this entanglement of, of symbols, products, interactions, and systems. And the, and the quick response of the maker community, but also the quick uh, exhaustion. Like, okay, we can do a lot of things, but I think that we are, we are having problems with care. Like how we care about ourselves, our communities. Um, and I think that we will need some kind of economy of caring, uh, to, to create something that goes beyond just economy uh, uh, as we have it. Uh, so I was thinking about like, in this entanglement of, of designs, how you can create or can you expand on the idea of, of designing caring uh, in the communities uh, and making this another kind of economical ledger, if, if you want, or, or value ledger, that allow us to not only uh, do a quick response, but do a sustained one. Yep. Can you expand on that? Um, I think we've have, we have seen elements of that in the repair manifestos this morning. Um, we, see, we see elements of, of, the, the, of this outside at the, on the poster uh, about critical making. Um, and I would suggest you all check out um, the house rules of Fab Lab Wellington. Because in the process of setting up their house rules, they went and worked with the indigenous community. And those people were actually much more able to bring in exactly those aspects that we sort of organized out of our markets. So that's, that's three possible starting points. Thank you so much. There's a bunch of more questions, but I'm afraid that's all we're going to have time for. So you're just going to have to come to Seabase or join the Gig Community Day tomorrow at Spreefeld uh, to ask Peter more stuff. Thank you so much for being here with us, traveling all the way to be here. As Thanks. Thanks for having me. <laughs>